So, hello everybody. Today, I'm going to talk about cloud robotics, internet for robots. So, just briefly first uh, about Rabita Robotics. So, we are a startup company. We are now two years old. We are roughly uh, 30 uh, people working on it, and our goal is to uh, use connected machines to empower uh, human life. So, let's start uh, having a look at uh, what a robot is. So, here you see a bunch of pictures, mostly from Hollywood, um, what they think a robot is, what a robot should do. But these robots, they are entertaining, they are uh, amaze us, they uh, run our imagination, but this is more how the reality looks like. So here we see a picture of some industrial robots manufacturing a car. Uh, everything is uh, neat and uh, there's a nice fence and everything. So if a human enters, uh, the whole machine stops. <coughs> but because it's uh, nicely closed and everything, these robots are really efficient. They have high precision, they're fast. Uh, unfortunately, Hollywood doesn't really talk about these kind of robots. Um, so the question now is, what about robots outside of factories? Uh, the robots we saw previously that Hollywood imagines. So here are two examples for robots which can be found outside of a factory. On the left side, we have a Roomba kind of robot, a vacuum cleaning robot. Um, companies who sell these products, they advertise these robots as smart, so saying these robots are able to uh, clean the floor autonomously. You plug and play it and it runs. But I'm sure you saw videos or saw it yourself. Uh, robots like these, they get stuck in cables over and over again. So the first few times you think, ah, it's cute. Let me help you, robot. Uh, lift it up, put it to the side, and it keeps running. But after the novelty wears off, you just think, oh, this is annoying, you put it back into storage. On the right side, you have a Predator drone. This is an unmanned uh, flying vehicle. Uh, a lot of people equate uh, unmanned with uh, autonomy and uh, intelligence. But if you have a look, this is the control center of this drone. So really, it's just a remote controlled plane, though an expensive one. So, what is the point here I'm trying to make? The point is, currently we are lacking intelligence to actually are able to deploy these kind of robots in uh, just general environments. So, let's have a look at what is important to make robots more intelligent. The first part is how do we represent knowledge? I have here an example of an online recipe to make a spaghetti. And for a human, reading this recipe, it's pretty straightforward to make spaghetti. I think everybody could make it. Um, but for a robot, it's different. A robot will have big issues with these recipes. I mean, we assume now we have a robot which is uh, able to parse this into language and everything, and it understands what it's saying. Uh, we have a robot which is actually able to handle all the utilities, is able to handle the food and everything. So we assume we have good hardware and uh, good knowledge about what actually is written here. I mean, these are also already hard problems, right? So why do I say that? There are two points here I want to point out. So the first is this recipe talks about turning on the stove to cook the meat and the pasta, but it never actually talks about turning off the stove. I mean, for us humans, this is a uh, common sense, but for a robot, it might be that this is not clear. And the second point here is in the second part where it actually talks about how we serve the spaghetti, uh, the recipe is ambiguous. There are two ways described. So the first is we put the spaghetti into the pan, stir it, and then put it on the plate. And the second one is we put the spaghetti on the plate and we pour the sauce over it. So how does the robot actually 
decide which of these two methods he should employ. Assuming now we are able to represent the data in a sufficient format for robots, so the, the, the robot is able to parse the information and everything, this important part is to transfer knowledge. Here, you have a picture of a classroom, right? Everybody goes to school, everybody is familiar with this. So here, we transfer knowledge from adults to children, um, as for example, using, uh, using examples to transfer knowledge, or in the form of books, and the natural extension using an online resource where you can also read about stuff. So for human, this is a lengthy process, right? You need to go a lot of years into school to actually learn stuff. When you read books, you first need to read the text, you need to parse, you need to understand it and absorb it. So it takes a lot of time to actually learn information for humans. For robots, this is much simpler because they have access to the internet, they can just download the information and then they can instantly use it. So as you can see, Internet is really helpful in this regard um, for robots as well as for humans to share information, to accumulate information, and make it available to everybody. Where else can the Internet help us uh, for robotics? So as you can see, computation is also an important factor. Um, the more information you have, the more knowledge you have, the more information you want to share, the more information you want to use the more resources you need in the end, uh, either storage or computation. So by tapping in into the cloud infrastructure, you can actually make the robots, uh, again, more lightweight and uh, cheaper, because for every single processor or hard disk or whatever you need to put on the robot, the robot gets more expensive and heavier, and this is not what you want. So we talked about a bit uh, what we want to do and why we want to use the internet. So is it really worth doing, though? I mean, currently, the current market, we need to say, no, it's not possible. It's just the market is too small. It's too fragmented. But there is this loop, uh, for example, in the smartphone industry, uh, more apps result in more hardware, and more hardware results in more apps. And we can apply the same principle to robots. So having more robots will uh, encourage more people to write apps, and more apps will encourage more people to use robots. So how do we bootstrap this process um, for robotics? Uh, our idea at Robotics Robotics is to build a small, lightweight robots for this, uh, also leveraging the recent advances in technology from the smartphone industry. So sensors and equipation has been getting way more cheaper and smaller. And in the following, you're gonna see a short video of the robots V kind of invention. So now we talked about what we want to do 
we talked about how we want to do it. So how do you actually make money with it? So as I mentioned, there are two phases, right? We first need to bootstrap the whole process, and later on we want to use the internet for robots. And in this picture you see the first part, the bootstrapping process. So you build some hardware at the bottom, you build some apps on the top, and you build a platform in the middle which connects those two. I mean, important to notice here the difference to smartphone industry is that a lot of these applications are not actually downloaded to the robot or the smartphone, but actually run in the cloud. So the second part, once you actually have bootstrapped the process and you have sufficient mass to actually get other people involved in development and uh, manufacturing of hardware and so on, is to generalize this middle part, this platform, and make it public to other people. So other people here in green can write applications and uh, other people can come in developing hardware and bring in their own hardware in blue. And because they use this platform, it doesn't really matter anymore for which robot you write the application, for example. As long as you get your data and you can send your commands, you're happy. So this will also uh, speed up the whole development process because robots, uh, roboticists don't have to do the whole full picture anymore. They don't need to write applications, the platform. They don't need to do hardware. They can actually just focus on what they want to do. If they're hardware guys, they can just build hardware. If they are application developers, they can just only focus on writing cool applications. So what are the challenges uh, in building such a platform? The first is data. So compared to smartphones, if you have a camera which runs at uh, 30 frames per second, you're going to have basically 30 smell, uh, selfies per second every second, and you need to be able to process this data. If you look at smartphone apps, you can upload a selfie, do some processing, and then you get something back a second later, right? This won't work for robots. So you need to be able to handle a lot more data than with smartphones. The second part is networking. So it needs to be reliable. Um, when you use a smartphone nowadays and the connection is bad, you say, okay, I'm gonna wait another 10 seconds for my download. You might curse the ISP and get a coffee. But for robots, it's not feasible, right? If the robot doesn't get commands on time, uh, human lives might be at stake. So you need to really make sure that networking is reliable and that you might decide what is critical data, what is not critical data, and so on. And the third part is computation. So we want to be able to virtualize our environment, right? So for the application developer, it doesn't matter anymore whether it runs on a robot or in the cloud or somewhere in between or whether it's split. So for the application developer, he doesn't even know anymore where it runs. So we need to be able to virtualize our environment. And as long as you're in the same data center, this is fine because you use the same hardware, you have fiber optics connection, so switching over to a different machine is pretty fast. But if it comes to robots, robots in the end become resources. But the connection to the robot is really slow and you don't have that many robots to switch to. So computation, especially the virtualization part of computation, will be very important because robots in the end also use different hardware. So let me summarize. We are Rapido Robotics. Um, we want to build a platform for robots, an internet for robots. But before we can do that, we need to bootstrap the robotics revolution uh, with small, agile machines. And later on, we scale up by building this platform for robots. Thank you for listening.